welcome to Fresh Dialogues. Today we're with Paul Kephart, who is a pioneer in living roofs. Paul, can we start by just explaining to the viewer what exactly is a living roof? Sure, a living roof, or otherwise known in a gr as a green roof, is a layer of soil and plant materials that typically cover the top of a structure, and in this case, a parking structure, but we find these on residential and civic and commercial buildings throughout North America. What the rooftops, these green rooftops do is they they cool the city by decreasing the ambient air temperature around the building by as much as 60 degrees in the summer months. They also help us save on our energy costs by thermally regulating the building envelope and and increasing energy efficiency, reducing that cooling load up to 20 degrees in the conditioned space. And that's just part of their benefits. The other major benefits are that they provide habitat for migratory birds and insects and that otherwise don't have a home. Butterflies, hummingbirds. Uh, they also, uh, one of their main benefits is stormwater management and it's like a big sponge so when it rains all that water is absorbed in the column of soil and it mitigates for these flash flood events or these events where that rainwater is entering our our receiving waters. What way does it mitigate? Can you explain how that works? I mean, yeah. like Hurricane Sandy in New York, were you aware of any green buildings in New York yeah, acting that, as a sponge? That they become more resilient to these kind of catastrophic events or, or more resilient long term to uh, changes in climate or spikes in energy demand and what we're trying to do is protect the structure, the building envelope, we're trying to regulate its thermal performance which uh, means a great uh, life cycle analysis for uh, those that are interested in that bottom line and that's one of the key components right now and one of the primary drivers of this greening movement throughout North America and beyond. It's why that this industry has grown 80% over the last five years is that we're seeing a return on investment. For example, this landscape is a, a non-mowed uh, California grassland type ecosystem that replaces a lot of that ecosystem that had been lost through the development. It takes very little input, very little fertilizers and water and maintenance in order to provide a beautiful green space, provides fresh air, habitat. I believe that uh, with political will and public education and, and this uh, emphasis on return uh, on the financial return on, on energy savings that we can really turn this around and green our cities. We know in, the, in a hospital setting that when patients and visitors alike are exposed to or have access to greening that they heal 35 percent faster right, I have heard about that. and that's one of the reasons why the Lucille Packard Hospital adopted this greening as a part of the structure. We know that uh, people when they have access to a park or greenery or look out of their office and corporate offices and buildings on this kind of setting that they ha they're more productive and they have less absenteeism. And that's why you see these uh, uh, corporate America like Facebook saying, let's build this beautiful park on top of our yes. structure. When the you know, corporate America begins to adopt a greening uh, and sustainable standard as a part of its architecture, it's a great statement. And it's, it's where we want to be when Stanford Medical Center adopts this green space and demonstrates to others that it's possible I see that California now is going to really adopt these, uh, these green measures and, and it's going to really take off here. Great. Well, Paul, thank you very much for being on Fresh Dialogues. You're a great pioneer for living roofs. Thank you thank very you. much.